In this video, we will look at how we can use arrays in um, user-defined classes and user-defined methods. So we'll see that how we can use arrays um, as instance variables, as a parameter to a method, as a return type or a return value from a method, and finally, as a local variable in a method. So let's create a new class here in our package. I'm gonna right click on the package and then new class. And let's call that class student. I'm gonna click finish. And now we have this public class student in the same package. Now, as I mentioned before, we can use our arrays as instance variables. We can also use them as um, parameters to methods or a value that is being returned from a method. So and let's start with this student class. Each of our students will have a name, so let's give them a string um, instance variable, and we need to make that string as private to ensure encapsulation, and let's call that string um, name, and let's give each student an age, so private integer age, and then let's give them also a double private double and let's name that double a GPA. So nothing new yet. We have three instance variables, a string, an integer, and a double. Each one of them is representing a different um, value. Let's um, create a getter and a setter for each one of them. So public um, void set name, and this will take a string name, and we are assigning the value this.name equals name. So to create a setter, like we did before, the setter is always void. It will take a value of the same data type as our instance variable. And we are storing this value name in the instance variable. We know this is the instance variable because we use the keyword this. For our getter public, the return type will be the same type of our instance variable string. And this one is get name. And it does not take any parameters. And we are returning back this dot name. So our getters will have a return type, which is the same type as our instance variable we are returning. They do not take instance variable or they do not take parameters and they will return the instance variable that we want to return. Now, let's say that we want to add a new variable or a new collection of variables that represents the individual grades for that student. Let's say that this student actually has four grades that we want to keep track of. Instead of creating four different variables, we can actually utilize arrays that we learned about um, before. So to create an instance variable as an array, we can still make it private. And now the data type of the array or the data type of our grades, let's, um, let's give them a double data type and we will put square brackets, which will indicate arrays, and let's call it exams. So this is our instance, a new instance variable, and this instance variable is a, an array, an array of doubles. How did we know it's an array? We used these square brackets. Now remember, the square brackets, you can think of them as part of your data type. So when you are declaring your array, you will keep the square brackets um, with the data type of that array. Now we need to initialize this array, and we do all our initialization using, using our constructors. So let's actually use our constructor. I'm gonna create a constructor here, public student. And this is my default constructor. My default constructor, I'm gonna initialize my array, this dot exams. And I'm gonna create a new double array in here with the size let's say we have we are keeping track of three exams. So in my default constructor, I'm going to initialize the size of that array with three elements. So this is my size of the array, or this is the array, new double array with three elements. Now, if I have another constructor, public student, and this, um, this constructor actually takes more than one takes more than one um, instance variable to initialize, let's say the name, string, name, comma, um, integer, age, comma, double, GPA. 
and we are not taking the grades for example in here in this case I will still need to initialize my um, instance variable exams which is my array variable so to be able to do that instead of repeating the same code that we did here we can actually call the um, default constructor using the keyword this so this keyword this it will actually call the default constructor because we're not passing any um, parameters here and this will initialize our um, array exams with three elements so a new double array with three elements now if we did not instantiate this array or initialize it with a new um, array in here if we try to access the array we will get a null pointer exception because this um, reference is not pointing to anything yet so the first step we need to do is actually point this array to a location in the memory using the new keyword and assigning a size to that array so this is what we did in these two constructors when we use the default constructor we are assigning the um, or pointing this exams array to a location in the memory with three elements same thing here with this um, constructor although we are not passing the exams we are still calling the default constructor to assign um, a location to that array in the memory so we will not have the null pointer exception we will still need to initialize the values for the other variables so this dot name equals um, the name that we passed this dot um, age equals age and then this dot GPA equals GPA so these are the two constructors I have now as we had for the um, for the string name we had a setter and a getter we can have also we will have also one for the age one for the GPA a setter for the age a getter for the age um, a setter for the GPA and a getter for the GPA we will also do the same for our exams so our exams since they are also considered an instance variable we will have a setter and a getter for them so let's create the setter and the getter for the um, GPA or for the exams so I'm gonna create my um, first I will create the setter so public setter will be avoid same thing we did with regular variables and let's call it set exams so this will take a parameter this parameter will be the value that we will be assigning to our exams now since the exams is an array our parameter will also be an array of the same type so double and we have two square brackets and this is our variable exams so we have an array this is our parameter we have a double array we call it exams and this is the value we are going to set for our exam now as we mentioned before we do not assign the values using the equality operator because we do not want to have two references pointing to the same location in the memory so what we will be doing we are actually going to copy element by element so for integer i equals zero i is less than exams dot length i plus plus and then for each value that we have in this exams we will copy it to the um, instance variable exams so this dot exams at location i will be equal to the um, array that we passed at location i so we are copying element by element instead of just pointing the two um, the two pointers to the same location in the memory so this way nobody can change if they try to change the values of this exams they will have to go through the setter or the getter to access these values they cannot access it from outside because they do not have the same pointer now same thing for the getter so public and the getter will be returning an array of doubles so my data type of the return type will be double square brackets so this is the return type it's a double array and then let's call it get exams we are not taking any parameters we are just returning the exams and my return type is now a double array so what we are going to return we are going to return an array of the type double so again we do not want to return the same array we want to return a copy of that array so let's create an array here double array let's call it copy and this array will be equal to a new array or a new double with the same size of our exam so this dot exams and we want to get the length of that exam this is inside our square bracket so this dot exams dot length 
Now we have the size of the, or we have the copied array, we will copy the elements one by one. So for integer i equals zero, i is less than um, exams.length or this.exams.length. And then i plus plus. We are going to make the copy at location i equal to this dot exams at location i. And this is the array we are going to return. So after we are done, we will be returning the array copy. Notice I did not I did not need I did not need to include any square brackets because the array is only referenced by its name. I'm not returning only one element. If you put square brackets, you will have an error because that means you are returning only one element. So if you added at location three, you are only returning the array at location three. But what we want to return actually is the full array. So we'll be returning the array using its name. So again, we think of the square brackets as part of our data type. So when we declare the array, we use the data type with the square brackets. If we are returning an array, we use the data type with the square brackets. If we are taking an array as a parameter, we use the data type with the square brackets to indicate that we have an array as our parameter. Now, other than the getter and the setter for these arrays, we can have any other methods that we can perform operations on this array too. For example, if you want to calculate the total of these exams, we can have a method called total that will do or calculate the total of this array elements like we did before um, for the total. Now let's go ahead and go and create an array or uh, an object of the student class. So to create an object in the main class, we are using the class name, so student. Um, let's call him stu1, and this is a new student. We can use one of the constructors that we have, either the default constructor or the other constructor that takes um, the name followed by the age followed by the GPA. Let's actually use the second constructor. So let's create a student called Sam with the age 15 and the GPA, let's give him 3.5. So we have our student. Now we want to assign them a grade or we want to give them the exam grades. Now the exam, if we want to give them the exam grades, we have to pass it as an array. So we can create an array here called exam. So I'm gonna create a double array double and this is called let's call it exams equals and let's actually use an initialization list so um, 10.5 for example 19 and then 20 this these are the grades that he got in his exams now we want to assign these exams for that student sam so what we want to do is actually use the setter to set the value of exams in student one so stu1 dot and then we have set exams and notice that the set exams will take a double array. Now to use our double array exams, the only thing we needed is actually the name of that array. We do not need to pass square brackets because we want to pass the array itself. So we use the reference to that array, which is exams. So when we call the set exams, these values will be copied, will be copied to the instance variable exams one by one from the um, exams array that we passed in this uh, method. If we want to get back the grades for that student, we can get back the grades using the getter. So stu one dot get exams. So that would return a double array. So we need to store it in a double array. So this is how we can use our arrays in, um, in a, a user defined class. We can use them as an instance variable. We can put them in a getter. So as, um, the return type will be a double array, for example, here or in the setter. So the, um, the parameter will be a double array. If we created another method, so public, and this is returning a total, which is a double value. So public double, and let's call it exam total. It's not taking any parameters. It will just use the exam array that we have. So exam total is going to return a double. So we are going to go for integer i equals zero. i is less than this dot exams dot length. This dot exams dot length. And then i plus plus. What do we want to do? We want to calculate the total. So I'm gonna create an integer here or a double here 
called total and we will initialize it to 0, 0.0 and then for each value in our array we want to add it to the total so total plus equals the exam or this dot exams at location i so once we get the total we will return that total so return total I missed the dot in here so this dot links and this will return the total so if we want to print the total of the exams for that student we can go ahead and system dot out dot print line and we are going to print the student exam so student one dot total or exam total so that will calculate the total for the exam so it will add the exam total or the exam grades that we have here 19 20 and 10.5 so if we run this now we'll get the total for that student which is 49.5 this is the total of his exam grades